Example 96. Researchers conducted a study on the age of sexual debut for different genders and ethnic groups. For the Euro-American males surveyed, the average age at the time of first intercourse was 16.61 years old. The standard deviation was 2.33 years old. We are interested in the average age at the time of first intercourse for groups of 33 randomly selected Euro-American males. Use this information to answer the questions below. So let's look at part A. It says, what is the mean of the sample means for randomly selected groups of 33 Euro-American males? So what's the mean of the sample means, right? So that's like saying, in other words, what's the average sample mean, correct? All right, and then it says, what is the standard deviation of the sample means for the group of 33 Euro-American males? And then it says, i.e., what is the standard error of the sample means? So remember that standard error is another way of saying the standard deviation of the sample means. Okay, so let's answer part A. That's pretty straightforward. We're talking about the properties from the central limit theorem, and the first one is basically asking, hey, what's the mean for x bar? Well, according to the central limit theorem, that's just the mean that you started with originally. So what was our mean in the problem? That's all we have to answer here. Well, it says that the average age for this group was 16.61, and that's the answer then for this first question, what's the mean of the sample means? Then for the second part of that first question, we have to answer what's the standard error of x bar or the standard deviation of the sample means. And if you remember from the central limit theorem, it's sigma divided by the square root of n. Sigma is the population standard deviation that was provided for us in the problem. So we're going to use 2.33. And then divided by the square root of n, the n here, the sample size, is well basically based on you know what we're saying in the problem here. It says what is the mean of the sample means for randomly selected groups of 33? So the sample size is 33 because we're taking groups of 33 Euro-American males. All right, then from there what we want to do is simply work out 2.33 divided by the square root of 33 and this will give us an approximation to our value and that value is 0 0.406 let's say. All right, for nice round numbers, we use three, three decimal places. If I'm going to use this later on in the problem, and I will be using it later on, I want to make sure to include maybe one or two extra decimal places just to avoid any issues that are related to rounding. So we'll keep that in mind. Actually, I'm going to store that in my calculator so I have it. All right, let's go back now and look at part B. In part B, it says, find the probability of a sample of 33 randomly selected Euro-American males having an average age at the time of first intercourse greater than 17. All right, so this is a probability question, right? We're looking for the probability in part B. We're looking for the probability of a sample of 33 randomly selected European males having an average age at the time of first intercourse greater than 17. So to do this problem, I would like to know how the data is distributed, ideally, because you know, if it was normally distributed, I should be able to use the bell curve, and then I know how to do that. That's pretty easy. Well, it turns out that it doesn't say that the data is normally distributed, but we're able to assume that here because we're taking a sample of size 33. We're not looking for the probability that an individual Euro-American male has had intercourse for the first time at an age greater than 17. That's not what it's asking us. It's looking for the average of a group of 33 randomly selected males. So we're talking about their average. And if we're talking about their average, then we're talking about the distribution of X bar, right? Because that's just a sample of this group. And if we're talking about its average, we're talking about the sample mean for that group. And I happen to know that the sample mean is normally distributed according to the central limit theorem, as long as our sample size is over 30. So it looks like we can assume a bell curve here because of the central limit theorem. And that's the power of the central limit theorem that even if we don't have data that's normally distributed or it hasn't been told to us and we have no idea if it is or isn't, we can assume normally distributed for x bar as long as our sample size is large enough. All right, so what we're going to label down here is the traditional z-axis, right, centered at zero. And instead of an x-axis, I'm going to use an x-bar axis. x-bar meaning essentially the sample mean that we're talking about in this problem. Now. The thing here that we have here is the average, the mean for x bar, so that's 16.61. We're going to center that here because if this is an x bar number line and the mean for x bar is 16.61, it should go right in the center of the curve. The standard deviation we usually put up here, so the standard deviation for x bar I'm also going to put in, and it's 0 0.40, remember actually it was 0 0.4056 if I remember correctly. We had rounded it up a little bit, but now that we're going to use it in a problem, I want to you know, give a couple extra decimal places. 
So there it is. And then from there, I need to look at the number they're asking about. They're asking about having a value that's greater than 17. So 17 is to the right. And greater than it, I would shade to the right then. So all that we do now is convert this into a z-score, right? And then look that z-score up, and the rest is pretty much routine. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's convert that 17 into a z-score. I'm going to do it over here. So that'll be 17 minus the mean, right? The mean is 16.61 over the standard deviation, which is 0 0.4056. Let's put all that together and see what we get. So I'll have 17 minus 16.61, close it up, and divide by 0 0.4056. And when we're done, we get approximately 0.961, but remember, if we're rounding off to two decimal places like we usually use for z-scores, then we should just call it 0.96. So 0 0.96 is our z-score. Let's go take that now and go to our table and figure out what area we get for here to here. Remember, that's what our z-table will give us, and then from there we'll determine what that tail area is. All right, so let's go do that and we'll come right back. Okay, so we're looking at the value 0.96, so we'll find the 0.9 row, 0 0.9, and go over to the sixth position here, which we end up seeing 0.3315 is our answer. Okay, so we found the answer 0.3315. That is the value when we look up 0.96 on our z-chart. Now from there, what's left over in the tail? Well, to find the final area, we're going to say, hey, half of the curve is 50% minus the 0 0.3315, right? So we'll use a little old school borrowing, right? So 10 take away 5 is 5, 9 take away 1 is 8, 9 take away 3 is 6, and 4 take away 3 is 1. So we get the answer 0 0.1685, and this is ultimately the probability that an x-bar value from this group of 33 Euro-American males will be greater than the value of 17. And so that is approximately equal to 0 0.1685, or about 17% chance. So that's your answer. All right, hopefully that made sense, and just remember that we didn't have to have the phrase normally distributed anywhere in this problem because we had a sample size large enough to assume the bell curve as long as we were talking about x bar. So when you read the sentence, when you're working out the problem on the exam, look for key words, the probability of a sample. Here we have a sample. In the previous problems, it always said one randomly selected. Now we're talking about 33 randomly selected. That sample size means we must adjust our standard deviation. Our next example is going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of what we did in the past and what we're doing now with the central limit theorem so you can see what the differences are and so you can properly uh, distinguish on the exam which method you should be applying.